raises the question, is there going to be a sincere progressive that seems genuine and can capture some of that Bernie magic Energy, that right, participates yeah. in that open field? If there is an open field and there is no progressive who is able to pick up the Bernie mantle, that will be an incredible indictment on the state of the movement and frankly might lend a lot of folks who might think Bernie's time has passed to be willing to give him a second look. Yeah, I already think the movement has, I, I don't think that there is, I, I think if there is somebody that comes through with that Bernie-like magic in the future, it won't be coming from the progressive base. It'll come from somewhere else, uh, you know, and possibly it would come from the right this next time, and that energy and that magic was about the middle class, focusing on the middle class, building the middle class. It's dwindling, and it's getting worse and worse and worse as we've seen inflation rise, the, the wealth trickling up to the richest and the, the middle class dwindling more into poverty. So somebody that can capture that magic is going to be that person that can actually speak to that middle class, and I just don't think that's the progressive base anymore. If there is somebody that comes through with that Bernie-like magic in the future, it won't be coming from the progressive base. It'll come from somewhere else, uh, you know, and possibly it would come from the right this next time. If there is somebody that comes through with that Bernie-like magic in the future, it won't be coming from the progressive base. It'll come from somewhere else, uh, you know, and possibly it would come from the right this next time. All right, so I wanted to get into this fascinating uh, discussion that took place between Brianna Joy Gray as well as Kim Iverson. And the issue that was being discussed consisted of, will Bernie Sanders run again in 2024 especially if you take into consideration his age, let alone the fact that he's lost two Democratic primaries in 2016 and 2020, in all likelihood, he is not going to run in 2024. Therefore, the natural question emerges, which progressive can sort of carry on Bernie Sanders' movement and Bernie Sanders' movement being tied to regulating the private sector, expanding the public sector in terms of expanding health care coverage by expanding Medicare, expanding educational access through four-year institutions, let alone vocational schooling, expanding the public sector in terms of a greener initiative tied to greener jobs, and possibly the implementation of some of the elements found in the Green New Deal proposal that's largely what bernie sanders not exclusively but somewhat if not significantly is what conceptualizes bernie sanders movement currently within congress there is not one said individual that stands out as being that individual that's going to carry on this movement of looking to expand the public sector and taking on the obstacles, and more importantly, taking on the obstacles that often prevent public sector expansion, and obstacles being decisions like Citizens United, let alone the increased role of oligarchy and plutocracy shaping and molding the democratic process through money and politics. Therefore, Who's going to be the progressive individual that's going to exemplify all those characteristics? Don't see such said individual in Congress currently. Whether that's the squad and even certain individuals in the Senate that may conceptualize themselves as progressives. Nina Turner, probably the closest that resembles Bernie Sanders core initiative in terms of carrying on his core policy initiative and therefore i don't see anybody else occupying that position and more specifically and more emphatically i do not i do not see anybody anybody on the right that's looking to occupy a position of carrying on any sort of progressive politics and i'm conceptualizing progressive politics tied to a center left political vision that looks to regulate the private sector and expand the public sector a sort of new deal social democratic vision i don't see 
anybody, any progressive, any progressive on the right, on the right, that's looking to stabilize a sort of strong and vibrant middle class by occupying such a New Deal social democratic vision. Therefore, I don't know how Kim Iverson defines progressive politics to be, but nonetheless, her articulation that the right is going to pick up this progressive mantle is utterly ludicrous, but nonetheless, that some of the statements that she makes within this interview or specifically this discussion. Therefore, I don't see anybody within Congress, whether the House or Senate, that's going to pick up that mantle. I don't see anybody on the right. But, but, Nina Turner is an individual that closely resembles, closely resembles Bernie Sanders in terms of exemplifying a core that's tied to a sort of social democratic New Deal vision. But nonetheless, that's some of the discussions that took place in terms of this uh, fascinating exchange. Thanks for your question. Says, I was just wondering how much the Kremlin is paying Kim Iverson for her efforts to try to split the vote in favor of Trump. Oh, here we go with Russia Gate, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah, loads of money. I'm becoming a millionaire as we speak. Well, to be fair, you did receive some money from a um, Syrian funded foundation, right, for some of the work that you've done. Yeah. There were, you know, I don't know where if they were funded by Syria. You know, that was something that some investigative journalists oh. said that these people were somehow connected to Syria. Um, I won an award that was gifted to many of us independent journalists, and I was never told why I won the award, like for which coverage in particular, and I was never told, to like that was it. I was never said, they never influenced or said anything. I literally don't know for which coverage. I only figured out the coverage later when I actually had an opportunity to meet with one of the members of that, um, of that fund. And he was Iranian, and he was specifically discussing my coverage on Iran. So I don't, you know, I heard that, but those of us that received it said, I mean, all of us have the same. We, we were not even in contact. We don't know who, we didn't know anything. It was completely, um, for us, they didn't come and say, hey, we like your coverage on Syria. Here's an award. That just didn't happen. They didn't say anything. Okay.